In today's winning plate, if you suffer from headaches like I do, you'll want to hear what our next guest has to say. Nutrition consultant and regular PTL contributor Leslie Bonsi is here to help us understand what triggers headaches and how to make them go away. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, life is just one big headache. headache. I it's know. True. There's so many things that we have to do every single day <laughs> that are not in our control. The good news is that from the food end, if there are things that we identify that are problems for us, and we take those out of the equation, and we end up having less headaches overall, or mm -hmm. they're less severe, then that's a win. Right. So what do we have down here? Some okay. fruits and veggies. So the first thing is that in the studies that have looked at this is there are certain items mm -hmm. that might be more headache inducers or producers. Okay. And they are in the category called amines. There's three of them. There's histamine. There is phenylethamine, and there is the other one, Amy. I'll remember the name of it, but none of tyramine is the other one. So they are found in certain food items. And Bananas, they trigger headaches. And they trigger headaches. The really? reason that they do is interesting. It seems that everybody eats these foods, but for people that are sensitive to headaches, they may not be able to break them down effectively, and oh. therein is the problem. So increased sensitivity to them, which I think is really cool. So bananas tomatoes and avocado. Now, if somebody has one banana every once in a while, right, not a big deal, not be a big but deal. people eat guac, oh, let's have a tub of guacamole and then headache because of it. I had never heard of that before. And then because Halloween coming up, phenylethamine, which is found in chocolate, particularly dark chocolate. So again, oh, I have a little bit of chocolate sometimes. No, let me eat everything in my child bag and be incapacitated for weeks on end. Well, you know what? I feel like this all, because we know that there are some health benefits to dark chocolate. But they can also, so it's a little bit, moderation, right? It's a and little bit. Right. And then also things that might contain monosodium glutamate in certain soups or other canned foods. Even fermented foods were a problem. Pickles, sauerkraut, soy sauce. For people that are sensitive to them, sometimes if they're eating Chinese food, it's not the stir-fried vegetables. It's what might be in them that triggers the headaches. And then also looking at things like Swiss cheese, mm -hmm. smoked meats, any of them. So one hot dog every once in a while, five at a time, a huge ham sandwich with cheese on it or a little blue cheese and then you've had it. And the other things that we know are an issue, caffeine. Now interestingly, yeah. is a lot of the medications do have a little caffeine I in I was going to ask you about that. They right. Do. And so caffeine is what we call a vasoconstrictor. So if you're shutting off those blood vessels, then it might help a little bit with the headache initially. The problem is that when you have a lot of caffeine, then it acts as a vasodilator, and then it's like whoosh, all this blood is rushing to your head, mm. and you get uncomfortable. So if people have one cup of coffee, fine. But people who start to go to the coffee shop, big With amount of things, coffee, yeah. incapacitated. And then the other thing, if you drink caffeine regularly, oh, maybe I'll eliminate it. What happens when you eliminate it? Hey! You're addicted <laughs> to it. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you're going to have that problem. Okay, this is yeah, a no-brainer. Yeah. I know. Well, I it know. is, and it's for a couple reasons. Is wine and all alcohol is a vasodilator, so more blood rushing to the head. Right. But red wine in particular has other substances in it that might be triggering. So a lot of people say, oh, it's the sulfites in the wine. Probably not. It's the phenolic compounds in the wine hmm. that might be more of an issue. So again, a glass, probably not an issue, but if I have Drink a glass whole of wine bottle. and I have salami with right. cheese and chocolate and pickles, then you're probably down for the count. So one of the things that we talk about doing is keeping a diary. Well, people don't, they do that for other reasons. Right. Headache it, diary. So you have headaches often. what you eat, when you are having the headache, mm -hmm. and then you can actually start to develop patterns. And the goal is then, well, I'll just eat air because then we can. Mm -hmm. But the goal is if we eliminate some of those foods or we cut back on some of those foods we eat in large quantities and see if it alleviates, it's going to be worth the effort to do that. So I know also that uh, dehydration can lead to headaches as well, and that's probably one of the number one things that can cause them. So how long does it take, though, to rehydrate your body if you're so dehydrated that you have a headache? Um, it takes probably a good 24 hours to do it, mm -hmm. and so the goal is being more proactive, and as the weather starts to transition, people don't think about it as much. Right. Oh, it's chilly outside, I don't need it. Yes, you do. In a dry environment, it is important, and 
all fluids count as part of your fluids for the day, but being consistent about that. And if you really notice you're having headaches a lot, take a look at that plate. Take right. a look at that mug. Take a look at that glass. Look what's in there. Maybe the first step is cut back a little bit or not have all those things at the same time. And at the end of the day, if there's a little bit less brain pain, it's going to be worth that oh, effort. Oh, it is such a, yeah, definitely <laughs> worth it. Okay, thank you so much, you Leslie. Welcome. And for more of Leslie Bonsi's healthy living tips, you can watch her winning plate segments here on PTL. And check out her website. You'll find that link at kdka.com slash PTL.